Well, Madam Speaker, I thank you very much. And I, uh, I've spoken many times on this floor about my great admiration uh, for the chairman of the Folk Transportation Infrastructure Committee, Mr. Oberstar. And uh, he knows that this bill isn't fair. And he knows that this bill isn't fair because he produced a chart last week that uh, has, all, has 50 states plus the District of Columbia, so there's 51. And uh, 22 states get nothing under this bill. Uh, and four states walk away with 58%. And not surprisingly, I heard the speaker likes the bill, California gets 30% of the highway funding under this bill. And any, uh, any member who's interested is more than free to come and peruse this at, at their leisure. Now, I, I give the, the chairman, chairman Overstar great credit because he wasn't happy with this, I believe, last week. And he fought with his leadership. And he has produced today a letter from Senator Reid saying he's going to fix it sometime in the future. Now, two things. That's the second big lie, the checks in the mail. The other thing is, I, I hope that the majority understands that a letter from Senator Reid just doesn't fill us on this side of the aisle with warmth and fuzzy feelings. If you want to fix the problem, fix the problem. And the problem is not fixed. This is not a jobs bill, and I, I also admire the Speaker of the House, but I admire her more today because she did not break into laughter when calling this a jobs bill. This is a no jobs bill. This is a faux jobs bill. This is a snow jobs bill. And I look forward to the, the unemployment uh, statistics tomorrow because I believe that we're going to looking at about 100,000 Americans to, uh, will have lost their jobs in the last month despite all these great successes. And continuing with my admiration for Chairman Oberstar, the, my favorite part of the speech that he gives on the stimulus package is all of those jobs which he created through the infrastructure spending in the stimulus, 8% of the funding. So that means, I, you'll have to figure out the math, Mr. Oberstar, but that means in an $800 billion bill, half the jobs were created by 8% of the funding, and that's thanks to you and the work that you and your colleagues do on the committee. So I, I guess the other half were created by about $750 billion. That's a strange, strange, strange investment. Would the uh, gentleman yield? I'd be, you know what? I'd be happy to yield. J just, just briefly, if the gentleman, uh, Madam Speaker, could assure us that there would be no Senate filibuster or hold on the bill, Senator Reid would have been happy to accept our changes. But he estimated he couldn't get that through the Senate. So he agreed to a fix in a subsequent bill, and he I, put it in writing, and we have to accept his written commitment to I, do that. And taking back my Thank time. Thank you, gentlemen, for yielding. Oh, my pleasure. And you know what? My, my, my uh, appreciation of you grows every day, but I will tell you what. Uh, if you can crack the code of the Senate, Republican or Democrat, then you deserve much more money than you're making as chairman of the full committee because they're a strange bunch. And it doesn't matter who's in charge, they don't seem to do anything. Now, right. I want to get to, to process now because the president down at this health care summit down at Blair House said nobody cares about process. Uh, but I've got to tell you, I, I, I've never seen this. This is my 16th year in the United States Congress. When Mr. Etheridge made his, his motion, Mr. Etheridge in North Carolina moves that the House concur and the Senate... I'd like, to, I'd like to give the, the gentleman an additional two minutes, please. The gentleman I, is recognized for two additional minutes. I appreciate it. Mr. Etheridge in North Carolina moves that the House concur in the Senate amendment to the House amendment to the Senate amendment with an amendment. And I thought, boy, that is really a procedural mouthful. And you know what it means? It's a procedural way to screw the minority, the Republican Party in this House. Not only can't we amend your bill, not only did we get it at 9.30 this morning, we can't offer a motion to recommit. Do you know what the majority leader, Mr. Hoyer, would be saying if we pulled that on him when we take the majority back next year? He'd be screaming bloody murder and he would be right. So, Madam Speaker, as a result of that, I would like to offer an amendment to this bill. The gentleman from North Carolina would have to yield to that request. Well, then I'll ask the gentleman from North Carolina to yield to me to offer an amendment to the bill. And, and so that the gentleman doesn't think that I'm sandbagging him, let me tell you what it's going to be. I would move to amend this bill to transfer the $13 billion in this sham tax credit that's not going to create one job and is really the dumbest idea I ever heard to infrastructure spending. I'd further have it in that amendment that the infrastructure spending now at $14 billion be distributed pursuant to the House proposal that Mr. Oberstar has proposed, which means every state in the union benefits, not just California, not just states that are walking away with a bunch of money. So, Mr. Etheridge, will you yield to me for the purpose of offering an amendment? Will the gentleman yield? I, I think you, uh, yeah, sure, I'll yield to you. I think the gentleman's willingness to help, but the rule does not provide for that. Well, uh, I, uh, can I... <laughs> 
The gentleman from North Carolina would have to yield to a unanimous consent request. Okay. Then, then, then Mr. Etheridge, we're going to give it another shot because we're not going to be able to hide behind the rule that doesn't offer it. I've said that. The rule doesn't provide for an amendment. The rule doesn't even provide for a motion to recommit. The only tool in the minority's toolbox. So, Mr. Etheridge, I ask unanimous consent. Well, first of all, I, need, I guess you need to yield to me for a unanimous consent request. Would you yield to me for a unanimous consent request? No, I think, do I have to ask him to yield to me, or do I yield to him to yield to me? The gentleman from North Carolina would have to yield for any unanimous consent request. Okay. Mr. Etheridge, I'm asking you to yield to me so I can make a unanimous consent request that you can deny. It's your time. Well, no, I'm, I'm asking you, sir, to yield to me for the, the speaker is... I, I, no. No. The rule does not provide for it. Well, that's nonsense, first of all, Madam Speaker, because the speaker has just indicated if you yield to me, I can make my unanimous consent request. The time of the gentleman has expired. I'd like to yield the gentleman an additional one minute the gentleman to make his unanimous an consent request. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Mr. Etheridge, here's the deal. If you would yield to me, which apparently you can under the rules but don't want to, uh, because you think the rule says so, which it clearly doesn't, the, Mr. We ask the parliamentarian, here's the deal. I want to make a unanimous consent request that the $13 billion in this worthless tax credit be transferred to infrastructure spending and further that that additional $13 billion be distributed pursuant to the House plan as opposed to the Senate plan. The House plan, uh, the Senate plan rewarding only four states with 58% of the money, 22 states getting zero. Now, Mr. Etheridge, I'm asking you to yield to me for that purpose. What was the gentleman's question? I'm asking you to yield to me for the aforementioned unanimous consent request. The gentleman is doing the same thing that happened in the other body. We're just trying to slow down a piece of legislation that needs to move to get to the <laughs> president's desk so it can be signed that we can help the American people. <clears throat> so that's uh, a no. Is that a no? I still have the time, Mr. Etheridge. Is that a no? The, the is rules that a no? Not, no? The rules do not provide for that and would need a UC to do that. You know what that is? That's a soup sandwich answer because the, pardon, the speaker has just said you could do it. Time of the gentleman has expired. Madam Speaker, this is nonsense. The time of the gentleman has expired.